In this video, we will analyze motion of objects along an inclined plane. In particular, we will sketch free body diagrams for these objects and we will apply Newton's second law, f equals to ma, and solve problems, solve variables that need to be solved. To get an idea of how to sketch free body diagram or force diagram for an object that is moving along an inclined plane, let's look at the following setup. The diagram shows an upward force that is being applied to this mass M. So to sketch free body diagram for this mass M, there is only one body in this scenario, so there is only one free body diagram. So to sketch the free body diagram for this body M, we need to list all the forces acting directly on this mass M in addition to this force F. The first thing that comes to mind is the weight. So the weight of this mass M that act vertically downward like that, that we can label as W and that is mass times gravity. The second thing is the normal force that acts perpendicular to the plane like that. So that is the normal force. And that is it. So you have three forces, F, N, and the weight. However, there is an important thing that we need to understand. Now, although there is an upward force F that is dragging the mass up, there is also a component of this weight that will drag the mass downward. So we need to figure out what that component is. The component of this weight W that acts parallel to this plane is written as W parallel. And the component of that same weight that acts perpendicular to the plane is written as W perpendicular. So you see, if F equals W parallel, the object has zero acceleration. That means the object can stay put, be at rest, or it can be moving with a constant velocity. Now if F is greater than the parallel component of the weight parallel to the plane, then the object will accelerate up the plane. Now if the force is the upward force is less than the component of weight that is parallel to that inclined plane, then the object would accelerate down the plane. So these are three scenarios. But first, we need to know an expression for this W parallel. What is the equation for W parallel in terms of theta and mg? So to answer that, let's arrange W parallel, W perpendicular, and the original weight in a triangular form, in a right angle triangular form. And this is how the triangle looks like. So in this triangle, this angle here is 90 minus theta. So how do we know it's 90 minus theta? Because this angle here is the same as this angle. So this is the plane and this is the hypotenuse of the weight. So the angle between them is 90 minus theta because this is 90 degrees, this is theta. So this has got to be 90 minus theta. So this is 90 minus theta. Now that means in this diagram, this has got to be theta. So now from trigonometry, immediately you see W parallel over W, W parallel over W is sine theta. Now that means the component of weight parallel to the plane is W sine theta, or W since W is mg, it's mg sine theta. Now likewise, W perpendicular over W will be defined according to trigonometry as cosine 
theta. So W perpendicular is mg cosine theta. So we need to recognize these two results for later use. So a theta is the angle of the inclined plane with respect to the horizontal. Let's look at problem shown below. In this diagram, calculate the acceleration of a block down the plane. The plane is frictionless and the mass is 4.5 kilo. So let's start by sketching the free body diagram for this mass. So there are two independent forces. One is the weight that is 4.5 times gravity. And then there is this normal force that makes 90 degrees with respect to the plane. And as we talked about, explained a few minutes ago, there is the component of that weight, that 4.5 g, that is parallel to the plane. And we know it is given by 4.5 g times sine of 20 degrees. And then there is the component of weight going down the plane opposite to the normal force. And we can write that as 4.5 gravity times cosine 20 degrees. Now, remember, we also have to label the acceleration. The acceleration is obviously down the plane because there is no force up the plane. So there's only one force that is trying to drag the mass downward, and that is this component of that weight parallel to the plane. So obviously the acceleration must be heading downward. So to determine the acceleration, we need to know the net force down the plane. The net force on this mass M down the plane is simply the component of the weight parallel to the plane. That is this force right there. And that is given by 4.5 G sine 20. So to get the acceleration, we know that we need to divide the net force by the mass according to Newton's second law. And knowing the net force as 4.5 g sine 20 degrees, and the mass is 4.5, so you see the mass will get cancelled and will give you the acceleration as g times sine 20. So g is 9.81, so the acceleration of this mass down the plane is 9.81 times sine 20, which is 3.36 meter per second squared. So that is the acceleration for this mass m. One thing to note is this value of 3.36 meter per second squared the acceleration is independent of this mass. So it doesn't matter what the mass is, as you can see, at this stage, the mass is cancelled. So leaving only the gravity and the angle. So if I were to replace the mass with, let's say, 9 kilograms instead of 4.5, it would have the same acceleration which is 3.36 meter per second squared. Only if I change this angle will the acceleration change. Let's look at another problem. So you have a block of mass 4 kilograms. So this is 4 kg mass. And it is on a frictionless plane inclined at an angle of 35 degrees. So alpha is 35 degrees. And it's connected by a string over a massless and frictionless pulley, so this is the pulley, to a second mass of 2.5 kg. You want to know the direction of motion of this mass m2, whether it's going to go up or down. The magnitude of the acceleration of each block, both of these two blocks uh, will have the same acceleration, and also the tension in the string. So let's start with the free body diagram. So free body diagram, there'll be two of them because there are two masses. Let's start the free body diagram for M2. Now M2, the weight is downward. So the weight of this mass 2 
is 2.5 gravity. The mass is 2.5 kilograms, so the weight is 2.5 times gravity. The other thing is the tension that is going up like that. Uh, we cannot label the acceleration yet because we don't know in which direction this M2 will move. So let's uh, hang on to that for, for the moment. Let's do the free body diagram for M1. Now M1 is resting on the plane. So this is M1. Obviously it has this weight which is four times gravity because the mass is four kilograms and then you have this tension along the plane going up like that and of course you have this normal force perpendicular to the plane let's label that as n now keep in mind that this weight has two components one is the parallel component parallel to the plane so let's label that as one parallel now we know what that expression is it is 4g times sine alpha now alpha is 35 degrees so it will be 4g sine 35 degrees the second component of that weight is the one that is perpendicular to the plane which we can label as one perpendicular and we know that to be 4g cosine 35 degrees. Now we have talked about how to obtain these two expressions. So first let's address in which direction M2 will move. Now note that M2 is being pulled down with a force of 2.5g like that. M1 it's being pulled down by its weight which has the magnitude of 4g sine 35. 4g sine 35 is quite simply 2.29g. So when you take 4 times sine 35, you get 2.29 times gravity. Now the tension in these two parts of the string are the same because they belong to the same string. And since 2.5g is greater than 2.29g, it's obvious that m2 will go down like that. So the direction of this acceleration for M2 is downward and the direction of acceleration for M1 is upward like that. Now we are ready to write down equations. So for M2 from this free body diagram the net force is W2 minus tension and that's going to be mass. Mass is 2.5 times acceleration. So W2 is 2.5 G minus tension equals 2.5 A. So that is equation 1. The second equation will come from the second free body diagram. So the object M1 is accelerating up the plane. So the net force is T minus 4g sine 35 which is 2.29g so this is the second equation t minus 2.29g equals 4a this is essentially f equals to ma so now all we have to do is to solve equation 1 and equation 2 simultaneously for a and t now when you add equation 1 and equation 2 you can eliminate the tension and you get 2.5g plus minus 2.29g equals 2.5a plus 4a which is 6.5a. Solving for a you get 0 0.317 meter per second squared. So that is the acceleration. Now what about the tension? Upon substituting a here or there you can find the value for the tension and the tension will work out to be 23.7 newtons and that solves the problem. I hope the two examples presented here have given you some idea of how to set up a problem associated with an inclined plane. Thank you for watching.